drainage is one of those issues in construction where your ability to influence the outcome goes away or at least falls like a stone as soon as you commit yourself to a course of action. There are lots of properties around here and perhaps where you live where drainage and water intrusion was not anticipated early and then later fixing it is scary, expensive, and sometimes not possible. I've seen houses where the crawl space, as regular as clockwork, fills up with water in the winter and dries out in the summer. So that house is sitting on super saturated soils for at least half the year and pests are invited and mold starts and um, dry rot and other kinds of wood deterioration happens and it's a problem. Resale value plummets. Home inspectors hate it. What about the whole deal about building in a floodplain? You better be aware of that before you commit yourself to a problem because I have seen water running in a front door in a flood event. And that's a hard thing to fix if you haven't done the legwork and made the allowance for the water before you ever start construction. Our building site is located in a draw. Now lower the draw, the little canyon, the ravine is bigger and collects and has to deal with a lot of water. We're towards the top, which frankly is why it appealed to us because we have the view and we're dealing with much less surface runoff at the top of the ravine than we would be at the bottom. But still, you may remember that the first time we came on here, there was an area now right over here about where my tractor is sitting that was green. It was wet, it was moist, even in, I guess it was May when we um, first discovered this site, it was spongy, it was wet. Water would squish up around your boots. And so we knew from the first, okay, got a little water intrusion problem from this little draw, this ravine, which runs up, I don't know, a couple hundred yards up the hill from where I'm sitting. and you know, maybe 200, uh, 150 feet behind me, there's some water here that's been collected and has continued to run at or just below the surface as long as this ravine has existed. So typically in a subdivision like this, the goal is to get surface water, water intruding from other sites, rainwater, all of it, out to the street. There's a storm drain system that will deal with the water in a really um, reassuring way, okay? And we have addressed that on three sides of this property with the pipes, the drain pipes, that we've put behind the retaining wall on three sides. West side, south side behind the big retaining wall, and on the east side on the short retaining wall, we've collected any water that gets to those points and it's safely transported out to the storm drain system. What remains is to collect the water that's coming down the draw. Frankly, the bigger water source for surface water as we've been digging this site, we've seen and had confirmed, yep, there's some seep going on here, and yep, it's very controllable if we take the time to do it right now. So the fix here is to install something that around here is known as a French drain or a curtain drain. You dig, you dig a trench. The bottom of the trench has to slope. Gravity needs to be your friend here because the only thing that's transporting the water out after all is gravity. And you have to create an opening below ground at that slope so that the water will always, regardless of what is ever put over the top, find its way into the trench and out. The way you do that is in clay soil like this, dig your trench, verify the slope, line the trench with filter fabric. Filter fabric will keep the clay from plugging the trench up over time. Put your drain pipe in the bottom of the trench at grade, verify the slope, and then cover it, fill that filter fabric lined trench with drain rock. Now drain rock can be anything. I'm using something that is essentially two inch, clean two, inch and a half, two inch, crushed basalt. It's clean, it will not degrade with wet dry cycles, it's hard. Once it falls, it's gonna be significantly compacted, then wrap it like a burrito, okay, think of this as a, a drain structure in the form and format of a burrito, close the top of it with the filter fabric and cover it with some more drain rock. This way, the drain rock creates a void, that is the water can migrate in between the spaces between the rocks, and at the bottom there is a clear channel of perforated pipe that the water can intrude into and then be carried out to daylight, as it's called, which will happen eventually at the flow line face of curb in the street.
the pipe in this system is to get the water through the face of the curb. The rock in this system is to create a permanent big void below ground so that all the water can be caught. And the filter fabric, the filter fabric is to keep the rock clean. Just like the oil in your car motor, the particles of clay that the water is carrying, and it does carry those particles, will eventually plug this rock up tight if the filter fabric does not keep it clean. So the filter fabric does exactly that. It filters the tiny particles of clay out and keeps them away from this drainage system so that it will work for a long, long, long time. Okay, go ahead. If you watch the retaining wall portion of this project, you might remember that we ran into a big perforated pipe drain line under that big cantilevered footing. Well, we ran into it again up here on the upper end of the lot. This drain was put in by the developer, and we are carefully digging our drain, our French drain, underneath this big one, being careful not to break into the clay that surrounds it or disrupt the layer of washed rock and filter fabric that surrounds it. Between this drain and our new one, the water that lands on this site, whether from the sky or from up the hill, should have no trouble at all finding its way out to the street. The drainage work that we're doing here will not keep our foundation dry. This is Oregon. This foundation is going to be moist at least six months out of the year. In real terms, probably eight or nine months out of the year, it's gonna be in contact with moist soil. What we're trying to avoid is super saturation. That's a point where the soil becomes so saturated that it loses its structural strength, or uneven saturation, where parts of the foundation are bearing on soil that's relatively dry, and parts of the soil are bearing on soil that is saturated, not good to be avoided, and that's what this drainage structure is going to do. Here's what you need to never forget in the planning phases of your construction projects. Water is bad news. Water erodes, it corrodes, you know, rust and efflorescence and all the other types of corrosion that can happen. It promotes rot in wood. It invites pests. It makes soils unstable. It will, if it gets in your house, just wreck everything. I mean, that's certainly one of the major causes for insurance claims that nobody wants, nobody likes. So on the front, in the design process, spend as much time as you need and whatever money is warranted to make sure that you deal with any drainage issues or water intrusion issues that might be part of the site that you're contemplating. One of the benefits of using this crushed 
clean basalt for drain rock is that it falls, that is it lands in the ditch at a fairly high compaction value. Now I don't know what it would be. I don't know if you could term it 80% or 90%. I, I don't know. But that granular structure and the size of those rocks means that once they fall in that ditch, they're going to be, they are not going to settle much. And the ditch is narrow enough and everything will be well enough sort of rolled on and worked on and driven on, you know, a year from now when we pour this driveway that I'm not going to be worried about whether or not I need to really bear down on compaction in the drainage structure. Because you need to be a little bit careful. You don't want to abuse that pipe or that fabric or any of the aspects of this drain structure. And so if you filled it with a washed rock that tends to roll around over time, huh, I don't know if that would be as good as a crushed drain rock inside of a French drain like this. Now keep in mind, I'm a carpenter. I'm not really a geotechnical guy, but that's the way it looks to me anyway. Later on in this series, you'll see us hook the rain gutters into the storm drain system. You will also see the crawl space drains that we hooked up. All you need to remember is you need to plan carefully how you're going to keep water away from your house. Solve this problem in a permanent way and make sure you do it long before you build the structure itself. Now, if you're contemplating building and you're fortunate enough to be building on a large site, you know, a site that's, I don't know, an acre or five acres or, you know, a large amount of acreage, one of the first things you should be thinking is where can I site this house where it's away from drainage issues? Where is the place that pleases me aesthetically, is accessible so I can get in and out, but is higher? Or if, in fact, you want to locate close to a body of water, if you've got one of those beautiful sites that's next to some sort of a water feature, you still need to raise the house so that the water will get away from the structure. In general, when you're building a house or anything else, higher is better. If you're interested in the costs associated with all of this, please check the notes below the video. There will be information there on how you can get access to what we're spending on this project. And if you're interested in drainage generally, if you have drainage issues you're thinking of, you might check out some of the other videos that we have about a project that we've recently completed in Arizona, a commercial project with serious drainage issues that had to be dealt with in a big way. Thank you for joining us here. Thank you for your interest in our channel and in this project. And we look forward to bringing a lot more content as this project develops in videos just like this. So thanks for watching.